Hey beautiful people, how are you? My name is Connor McMillan. Today's video is going to be an update on my diet. One meal a day, intermittent fasting, whatever you want to call it. I'm doing generally 22 hours fasting, two hours eating. And uh, let's see, it's been like seven months of this. So recently I had a big change in my life, emotionally, uh, externally, a lot of different elements coming into play where it, it was really difficult to do 22 hours of fasting on the daily. So I would do like some fasting days and some like totally not fasting days. And this lasted for about 30 days. So I, I would say in general, I had like a good month off from OMAD. And I want to share about, you know, what I noticed during that time and what I'm noticing now that I've been back on OMAD for 10 days and kind of that transition between going from long fasting days to not so much for a month and then going back to long fasting days. The first thing that I would say is that for most of us, trying to change our eating habits and I use that word intentionally, habits are a difficult thing to do. And I think a big reason for this, as you probably are aware, is that a lot of our system is connected with food, especially emotionally, and our thoughts throughout the day, like you know, looking forward to the next meal that we can have. But there's just a lot of emotion connected with food. And for a lot of us, food is how we take care of ourselves. And for many of us, we have a lot of different tools we use throughout the day to sort of navigate the various obstacles and challenges that we face. And food is definitely a tool that I think we all use in various ways to take care of ourselves. So it makes sense when we're trying to make big changes and we're specifically talking about removing this tool from our lives for a huge chunk of the day that it might come with its own set of challenges. And so for me, what I've really noticed is if my other self-care tools and practices are not being taken advantage of, it's much more challenging for me to stick to an OMAD or a long fasting window day to day to day. So during this time, this month period of time, I just had a lot going on emotionally, externally, a lot coming in at me, and it really felt like I chose to step out of trying to intermittent fast when it was feeling kind of overwhelming to do so. And during that time, there was a lot of days that I just decided I'm gonna eat whatever I want. And I wasn't super focused on a particular dietary track. I wasn't particularly focused on adhering to taking the supplemental protocol that I had set up for myself. And this was all very intentional and very chosen. And I'm really glad that I did it. I also had times during that period where I felt like, man, I'm, am I going to get back to intermittent fasting and, and OMAD and kind of like, getting back to some of the goals that I had set for myself because I didn't go into the 30 days saying, okay, for 30 days, I'm just going to do whatever I want. And after that, I'll get back to it. I just kind of was taking it day by day and it became kind of like increasingly more difficult to imagine going back to fasting after not fasting uh, for X amount of time and sort of opening myself up to, um, foods that I wouldn't typically eat or at least not eat a lot of on a regular basis, like more fried foods. Uh, I had I, I had a donut or two, I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, things like that, that I, like all plant-based foods, that, that still feels very important to me to stick to pretty much no matter what I'm doing. But a lot, of, a lot of different foods that I wouldn't typically eat in a protocol that I'm thinking about full body health. But that's what I needed during the time, so that's what I did, and I feel really good about it. What I noticed during that time was an increase in body weight, so I gained about 10 pounds over that period of time. Um, I don't think anyone would look at me and say, like, that guy's fat, but looking at my own body, I could tell that the increase, maybe some of it did go to, to some muscle composition, um, but most of it sort of went to an overall layer of a little bit of fat. 
and uh, and emotionally speaking, mentally speaking, I felt a little more dampened, a little more down, and I definitely used food um, in order to kind of take care of some of the emotional stuff I was going through. And by the way, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, we all have different ways of taking care of ourselves. I don't think there's anything wrong with the ways that we do that. I think what's important is for us to have as much intentionality and, 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 and empowerment when we choose to take care of ourselves in certain ways. So um, I really want to let you know that wherever you're at with food, or maybe it's alcohol, or maybe it's sex, or maybe it's pornography, or maybe it's your job, whatever it might be that you're using as a tool, some may call it a crutch, to take care of yourself, it's really just that, it's a tool. And there are an infinite number of tools out there available. Some, you may say, are healthier than other tools, but there's nothing wrong with you for trying to take care of yourself. You will continually improve your life and the tools you use to take care of yourself if you want to, if that's your intention. So don't beat yourself up over this stuff. Bring more intention back to yourself, bring more awareness and bring more compassion and you will see set in motion natural progression towards healing and towards growth. I absolutely promise you. So there's nothing wrong with the way I was taking care of myself for those 30 days. When it was time, when I was ready, when my whole system was like, all right, let's do this, it was pretty easy for me to get back onto one meal a day. From Texas, I flew to Thailand, and as soon as I got here, just some weight released from my emotional body, and it became very, very, very easy for me to just quickly jump back onto 22 plus hours of fasting every day. And that's what I've been doing since arriving here in Chiang Mai, where I've been for about 10 days. I, ha I brought my whole elixir supplemental system with me in a duffel bag, and I've been adhering to that. A uh, little tough to track calories right now in Thailand while I'm going out to eat, but I think I can, I can honestly say it's under 2,000 calories every day, which puts me into pretty much a caloric restriction as well as a temporal restriction throughout the day, and that's not necessarily something I am um, advocating or even uh, trying to do perfectly for myself every day or have some kind of awareness that I have to do it this particular way. Uh, but right now that's feeling really good for me. And since that change, I have noticed that my emotional well-being, my mind, and my body have just shot right back to where I kind of left off before I had that 30 days off from OMAD. So it was a really quick transition back into what I'm feeling is like I'm in the groove. My, um, my healing, my uh, rejuvenation, lean, lean muscle growth, um, fat loss, all that stuff is just kicked in and I feel the benefits, I see the benefits. I'm reaping the rewards. So right now I'm in that positive feedback loop where it just like it makes sense to do this. I will make some follow up videos later on down the road about the specific things that I'm eating here in Thailand which are a little bit different than the things I, have, I, I was eating in the US which I think are making it a little bit easier. Particularly, I want to uh, give a shout out to fat and say thank you fat. Uh, coconut fat, some, some nut fat, some seeds fat, some avocado fat, all that stuff, all the fats I'm feeling are really helping me um, s stay fasting and uh, making it a lot easier. But I, I don't want to spend too much time on that particular element because I think that's deserving of its own video. But I'll leave you with that. So much love to you. I hope you're having an awesome time on your journey, be it with whatever you decide to set your intentions and your goals on, I commend you for it. And I think as we improve ourselves, we improve the world. And I, I just think that the best thing you can do for the world is to really focus on yourself for a time and to see what you're needing so that you can show up in this beautiful place uh, with all of yourself and really offer the world you. And I think that takes some time to 
to, to create, to find the balance, to find the centeredness inside of ourselves so that we can be our best and fullest self to the world. So, so much love to you. Take great and good care of yourselves and we'll see you soon. Bye.